Hi everyone, and welcome back to the world of EditorX. In today's video, we're gonna do something that's a little bit different. We're gonna build a fully functional, fully responsive clock using EditorX and also implementing some Velo code. So this is what our clock is gonna look like. And as you can see, it's fully functional. It's also gonna change theme between day and night, depending on the hour. As always, if you wanna support this channel, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now let's get started. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna remove the header and the footer from the page and make this section a bit taller. And we'll change the minimum height to 100 VH. Then we'll go to the add panel and add in a container. Stretch that across the section and then we'll add a background image to that container and stretch that as well. Now we're going to go to transparent video, more transparent video. We'll search for sun and we'll choose this holographic sun video and add it to the page. Give it a little drag so it attaches to the container, align it to the center and middle and we're going to change the width to 45 VW. This way the width will be in relation to the width of my viewport. Now we're going to select the section, go to quick add and add a new container. And we're going to repeat the steps that we did for the sun. We'll stretch the container. Then we're going to add a background image, stretch the image to the container. And then we're going to add a transparent video of the moon. We'll search for moon and then we'll add it in. Again, we're going to give it a little drag so it attaches to the container. If we take a look at the layers panel, we can see that we have a section with two containers and each container contains a transparent video and a background image. Let's name these containers moon and sun. In the layers panel, we'll select the moon container and in the adjust panel in the inspector, set its opacity to 50%. That way we can line up our layers accurately and when we're done, we'll set this back to 100%. Next we'll select the moon video and set its width to 35 VW. Let's just close out these panels and check that everything is scaling proportionally. Let's go to the quick add menu and click on container. This way it adds itself to the section. This is gonna be our clock. Let's take the background color off the container. It's already centered and that's great. Let's just change the width to 33 VW and also the minimum height we're gonna change to 33 VW. That's going to create a square that will scale with the viewport. Now let's go back to the add panel and from my media, we're going to drag in the frame of the clock. Let's center it and set its width to 100%. Now let's drag in another container. And let's apply a grid here of two rows. We'll adjust the grid, edit grid, and set the rows to auto. Then we'll remove the background color from the container and quick add to that container, another container. We'll drag it into the first row and stretch it to that cell. Change the background color to white. And then in the parent container, we're gonna change the width to 1.5%. And we're gonna change the height to 45%. And we'll zero out the margins so it will be centered. Now let's duplicate this container. Change the width to 1% and the minimum height to 60% and also zero out the margins. 
duplicate again, change the width to 0.7% and the minimum height to 65% and also zero at the margins. So basically these containers are going to be our clock dials. Just to keep everything in order, in the layers panel we're going to rename this to clock. Uh, this is going to be our clock frame. We have our hours dial, minutes, and seconds. Now let's just resize to see that everything is scaling proportionally. That's beautiful. And now let's do some changes uh, in the lower breakpoints. So the clock will take up more space uh, because it's getting rather small. So I'm setting the transparent uh, sun video to 75 VW. And then the moon video I'm going to set to 60 VW. And then I'm going to go to the clock and change the width to 58 and also the uh, height to 58 VW. That looks good on tablet. Now we can go to mobile. And we'll change the width to 100 VW of uh, the uh, transparent sun video. And then the moon is going to be 80 VW. And the clock is going to be 75 VW, both on the width and height. Nice. So now that we're finished with the layout, we can bring back uh, the moon to 100% opacity. And this is the part where we're going to implement the code that is going to make this clock work. So let's turn on dev mode. And first thing that I want to do uh, is I want to give my elements some IDs that we can use to target in the code. So display IDs toggle is turned on and I'm going to change the moon container to moon and the sun container to sun. Uh, I'm also going to give this uh, an ID of hours dial, minutes dial, and this one is going to be, of course, seconds dial. And let's maximize our code ID so we can see everything better. Inside our onReady function, we're going to call two functions. Uh, one function uh, is going to be the clock function. We're going to call that clock. And the other one is going to be for the clock theme. And we're going to call that theme. And we're going to create them uh, outside of the onReady function. So this one is going to be for clock. And this here is going to be for theme. Now, in order to get the time, uh, we're going to use the date object. So we're going to create a variable uh, called date. And date is going to be set to the new date uh, object. And then hours uh, is going to be date.getHours. Minutes uh, is going to be set to date.getMinutes. Uh, these are just functions uh, of the date object. And then we're going to set some uh, global variables uh, for the dial rotation that we're going to calculate later. So we're going to have hours rotation, minutes rotation, and seconds rotation. Inside the clock function, we're going to target the clock dial uh, elements. Uh, we're going to do that using the $W uh, selector that we have in Velo. So hours dial is going to be $W hours dial. And minutes dial is going to be equal to $W minutes dial. And seconds dial of course is going to be equal to $W seconds dial. And next thing that we want to do is run the clock. And for that we're going to use a set interval. And we're going to give it an interval of a thousand milliseconds, which is one second. 
So the code that's going to be inside this set interval is going to run infinitely every second. The first thing we want to do is we want to calculate the dial rotation. Each one of these dials rotates 360 degrees. So basically we have to convert the hours, minutes and seconds values into degree values. So here comes the math. We have 12 hours in a clock. So we have to take 360 degrees and divide that by 12 and that gives us 30. So now we take 30 and multiply that by the hours that we get from the data object and that gives us the rotation for the hours dial. We also have to take in consideration that the hours dial is affected by the passing minutes as well. So we have to add that to the calculation. In order to do that, we have to add minutes divided by two. For the minutes and seconds, the calculation is different. Because you have 60 minutes in an hour or in a clock, then you have to divide 360 degrees by 60 and that gives you six. So in this case, the minutes rotation is gonna be six multiplied by the minutes that we get from the date object. And the seconds rotation is gonna be equal to six multiplied by the seconds that we get from the date object. And there you have the rotation calculations for the clock. So now we wanna advance the clock based on some logic. We're gonna use an if statement here, and we're gonna say, if seconds is less than 59, meaning that the minute is not over yet, then we're gonna increment the seconds. Else, if seconds did reach 59, then what we wanna do is zero out the seconds because this is a new minute already. And now inside this else, we're gonna open another if, and we're gonna say if minutes is less than 59, meaning the hour isn't over, then we're going to increment the minutes. And else, if the hour is over, if it's minute 59, we're going to zero out the minutes because it's a new hour. So here we're going to add another if statement for the hours. So if hours is um, less than 23, then increment uh, the hours. And if it's not, then we're going to set hours to zero. So else hours equals zero. So the last thing that we need to do with the clock function is animate the dials. So we're going to import uh, the Wix uh, animations API and use that. So here we're going to animate the clock based on the calculated dial rotation. We're going to use uh, the Wix animations dot timeline and then dot add. And here we're going to target uh, the hours dial. And we're going to give it an object with the animation properties. So we want to rotate. And in the rotation, we're going to give it the hours rotation. And the duration is going to be zero because we don't want any duration for the animation. And then we're going to use the play function. Now let's copy this line two more times and just change the targeted dial, which is the minutes dial and change the rotation to the minutes rotation and do the same for the seconds dial and the seconds rotation. Right now we can publish this and let's test it out. And as you can see, our clock is running and is on time. All right, so now we can take care of our theme function. And the logic here is if hours is uh, greater or equal uh, to 18, meaning 6 p.m., or um, less than 6, which is 6 a.m., then basically we want to target the moon um, container and show it because it's nighttime. And we want to hide the sun container. And else is the opposite. We want to, let's just copy this. 
uh, hide the moon container and show the sun container. All right, let's publish. And it's evening time uh, while I'm recording this video, so we're seeing the moon theme. So we're gonna do a little time manipulation and instead of getting the hours from the date uh, object, we're gonna just set it to 17 and that way we can see how the sun theme looks like. And that's how you create a themed clock in Editor X. All right, guys, thanks for joining in. And as always, if you enjoy the content on this channel, please don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you on the next video.